From the very beginning, SUA knew the land better than the agency that manages most of it. We made that our business. And right now, uh, we can still claim to know more than anybody about what uh, Red Rock Country looks like. I moved here full time in 1979 to work for BLM. They gave us all of six months to intensively inventory half a million acres. I mean, in most cases, the inventory was wholly inadequate because we weren't given enough time or tools or people or instruction on how to do this. It was a very bizarre process. County Commissioner Calvin Black said, I'm not a violent man, but I'm getting to the point where I'll blow up bridges. We're going to start a revolution. We're going to get back our lands. You had better start going out in twos and threes because we're going to take care of you BLMers. Paul, who was my boss at the time, said, Mr. Black, I hope you're not threatening me. Calvin said, I'm not threatening you, I'm promising you. The first executive director, when SUA started, he had worked for BLM in Arizona. He was infuriated, just like I was, and he wanted to start an organization. So he had to pull together a board, some staff, some ideas of how to, how to challenge this federally mandated process. The, the political climate has never been worse than it was then. A guy named Jim Hansen was fond of saying, not one more acre of wilderness. He was a congressman from Utah. So they were vehement against it. So what we set out to do, with, with the help of dozens and dozens of others, we went out on the ground to see what was there and to document it. And we put together a, a literal book on what's wild in Utah. It was a difficult process, but we all had each other. A citizen inventory led to more acres being included as proposed wilderness study areas to Congress. Early on, the SUA staff recognized that to succeed in protecting Utah wilderness, we needed to go beyond Utah. So we elevated the need to protect these magnificent places on a national level. So we took members of Congress to Southern Utah so they could really feel why it was so important. We took them in small planes and flew over the canyon country. We took them in canoes and rafts down the Green River. We took them on the trails. We took them into Slot Canyon so they, they could really experience it and understand why it was so crucial. And they became rock solid allies. We also used litigation to ensure that we were protecting places within the bounds of the wilderness proposal. And when we started doing that in the early 90s, we were really on the frontier of that kind of litigation in Utah. When Sioux attorneys walk into court now, there's no doubt that they belong there and they have a really terrific success rate. What it means to broaden the tent right now is to really lean in to native voices, such as we've seen with Bears Ears National Monument or the ancestral footprints of the Grand Canyon National Monument in Arizona, to continue to resource indigenous-led, tribal-led initiatives for public land management. Part of that vision for Utah and for the West is much more vibrant rural social network and a more effective conservation movement, one that can actually win because it has more voices, more cultures, you know, coming to the conclusion that our natural areas are essential and ensure that our Red Rock wilderness stays wild for posterity. The public lands, the environment is intertwined with politics. And if you don't know those things, you're, you want to lose out and you're going to be left behind. So if you have the votes, if you have the power, you can speak to the county commissioner, the state legislature, U.S. Congress, U.S. Senate, President of the United States. SUA is more in tune with the situation. They've gone through some real tough litigation in the past. They sparred with some really hard-nosed rock wing politicians, and they've been, you might say, uh, blessed by the fire. 
So they have the experience when they talk, they know what they're talking about. The lasting legacy will be when all of the, the Utah Red Rock Wilderness Act is passed and all the acres that are finally included in that citizen's bill become congressionally designated wilderness. When I started working at SUA, I took over the office and the desk and the computer of my predecessor, and he had a little post-it on his monitor that said, endless pressure, endlessly applied. And I still have that post-it. When I think of SUA, that those are the four words that I think of. They just never give up. There wouldn't be any successes without SUA's members. And we thank you all for the support you've given us, the confidence, the trust. Protect Wild Utah.